Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday service. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas day and were able to spend some of it with loved ones, whether it was in person or on the phone or on Zoom or FaceTime. However you spent Christmas day, I hope you felt blessed by it. Let us open our time together in prayer. As Mary and Joseph went on the pilgrimage of faith to Jerusalem, so we too are on a pilgrimage of faith. Meet us, O God, and open our eyes to see the eternal truths all around us, calling us into love and more love and things that are everlasting. Amen. We sing our carol, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Jeff will bring us our Bible reading, followed by the talk which this week is given by Archdeacon Pete. The reading is taken from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, 
and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Whilst Christmas is going to be very different for many of us this year, I bet one of the things that's not going to be different is the enjoyment of the watching the telly, the Christmas special. Last year our family really enjoyed Gavin and Stacey. When I was a child growing up it was the two Ronnies, the Morecambe and Wise show, or even Mike Yarwood Christmas special. And then of course we enjoy a good film at Christmas. Again last year I discovered a film which I'd not seen before, Christmas Chronicles, about two children home alone on Christmas Eve who decided to film Santa Claus delivering their presents. But of course it might be It's a Wonderful Life or Love Actually, and my secret pleasure, Elf. When we watch a Christmas special or film, we enjoy the performance of the actors, the people on the screen. But we don't always think too much about what's going on behind the lens. Who else has contributed to making that film or Christmas special happy? Is it simply entertainment? Or is there a deeper meaning? In our Gospel reading today, we hear how Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. She too was grappling with the significance of what was going on in and around her. Nativity plays may not have happened in the way that we would normally have expected them this year, but What's so wonderful about them is that we see Christmas through the eyes of a child and we all have our funny stories about them. One of my favourite stories is about the little boy playing Joseph who started to reach into the crib to pick up Jesus when the little girl who was playing Mo Mary told him off in a loud voice and said, Here, leave him alone, he's got nothing to do with you. 
that makes us think, what has Jesus got to do with us? What is his relevance to today? Well, the birth of Jesus had been an event years in the making and the script had already been written. In Isaiah's great prophecy a few hundred years before, he had prophesied that the people walking in darkness would see a great light. And when people first heard it, they thought, great, because their experience was one of darkness, of bitterness, of pain. They felt abandoned and bereft of God, and they felt that soon they would see his deliverance. Well, years passed, hundreds of years passed, and they were beginning to despair. In order to to fulfil his promise and to bring the script to life, God needed to assemble a a cast. He needed a woman willing to carry a baby before she was married. He needed a man descended from the great house of David who would be willing to marry a woman carrying someone else's baby. He needed to get them to take a journey of 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, David's hometown. He needed the baby to be born in poverty. He needed some people to make the great announcement. You can almost hear God say, action, as he lines up the great chorus of angels to declare the news above the angels above the hills of Bethlehem and he needed some people on the edge of society to hear the good news first so he chose some shepherds and he needed some people from outside the people of Israel to come and find the king. So kings were travelling from afar, from the east. But that's a story for next week. So Christmas is not a series of random events, but the intentional unfolding of God's plotline right from his heart. But we would be mistaken if Christmas is a one-off event that we simply remember and enjoy each year. The Christmas cast that God had assembled were people just like us. And God continues to work his purposes out, as he did through them, so with us. And he still needs a cast and a crew to be a part of it. And he wants you and me. His vision for the world is the kingdom of God, a kingdom where there will be no injustice, there will be no sorrow or mourning or pain, because all that will be a thing of the past. And Jesus has established it and taught us about it. We all have a part to play in the kingdom of God. No one has failed the audition. There are no stars, supporting actors or extras. We are all equal in God's sight. You may never watch the credits of a Christmas TV special or a film, but if you did, you will see the names of all those who have made it happen behind the scenes and how they've all contributed and work together. It couldn't be done without them. And so it is with us that we all have a part to play. Jesus' birth changed and continues to change the world. It was the possibility that now anyone could have a relationship with God. In Christ we see how much he loves us how he is with us. He is Emmanuel. When we receive him, we are able to
to become children of God ourselves. And we know that he will look after us. He will protect us. He will guide us. He will love us unconditionally and help us all by his spirit and right through our lives. This has been such a difficult and traumatic year for so many of us for all sorts of reasons. And as we enter the new year, we still do not know what that new year holds and what it's going to look like. However, we must remember that God is still working his purpose out. And he still wants to use each one of us. So we must never despair. And we must always put our trust in God. Jesus' birth and life is such good news it ought to make us feel good just like a christmas tv special or film but so much better it is something that we should share with others and enjoy not just for day but for every day so as i finish i'd like to leave us with a prayer May the babe of Bethlehem be yours to tend. The child of Nazareth be your friend. The man of Galilee, his strength to you lend. And the Christ of Calvary be with you to the end. Amen. May I wish you a very happy Christmas and a happy New Year. Today we honour Simeon and Anna. Both had a light that sustained them. They both held strongly to what they knew they hoped for. May we, people of all ages, be held together by what sustains us. Whether seven or seventy, may we know what is most important. God, in your mercy, hear us. Today we honour all shapes of families. Families by choice, families by adoption, families by birth, families in grief, families in multiple homes, families in negotiation, families in care, families in support. In all shapes of family, may we find words of love and kindness. God, in your mercy, hear us. Today we pray for people were ignored because of their age. In an era where youth and beauty are praised, we have so often ignored wisdom, experience, long-standing faithfulness and perspective. For all who have felt overlooked, for all who have love and wisdom to share, we pray. God, in your mercy, hear us. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're now going to listen to a beautiful Christmas anthem, the Coventry Carol. It tells the story of the women who grieved the loss of their children in the med of the Holy Innocents by the awful King Herod, who was wanting to kill the Christ child. So let us listen to this haunting but beautiful Christmas music.
We're now going to sing Happy Birthday, followed by this week's gallery. Happy Birthday to you. We sing our final hymn, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen.
let us close our time together in prayer. Lord, your faithful servants, Anna and Simeon, had dreams and visions that sustained them in their old age. Enrich us all with visions and dreams that sustain us from one decade to the next, so that our eyes might always be bright with the life that we see all around. Send us out today and all days with this love and this vocation. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.